software, I focus on solving linear programming models. Let's quickly review what we discussed last time. For LP formulation, we had two main terms, resources and activities. Resources were the rows in the table of data and activities were the column. Here you can see some examples for each. Resources can refer to money, particular types of machines, vehicles, or personnel. Activities can include investing in particular projects, advertising in particular media, or shipping from a particular source. Problem involves choosing levels of activities to maximize overall measure of performance. So we define an objective function or performance measure, and we want to choose the best levels of activities, the best values. We also discussed a prototype example, window class company, and went over main steps for formulating an LP model. The reality is that actual linear programming models can have hundreds or thousands of functional constraints. Number of decision variables may also be very large. So modeling languages are used in practice. They expedite model management tasks. In our course, we use Python as a programming language and Groby Pi as an optimizer engine to solve large linear programming models. We are going to use lists and dictionaries as data structures, and we are going to use for loops to generate hundreds or thousands of constraints in the model. And then we uh, use Groby Pi to optimize the problem. Now, I would like to go over main steps for solving an LP model. The very first step is to import Groby library. So from Groby Pi, we import everything. That star means everything. Then we have access to all functions defined under Groby Pi library. Then we create the mathematical model and as an object. So we define a variable name here, like the desired name, and then we use the reserved word model to create that model. So the reserved word colors are different in this slide. The next step is to define decision variables. Now that we created the model as an object, then we can assign different attributes. So variable, constraints, objective functions, like we, would be like an attribute to that object. So in order to define decision variables, we call the model desired name dot add var or add variable. Now we can have different variable types. It, they can be integer values, they can be uh, continuous or binary. In this example, you see vType equal to grb, referring to Groby, dot integer. It means that all decision variables can be integer. They can take on uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and etc. And we, we pass two other arguments, lb and ub, which refer to lower bound and upper bound. So the lower bound for our model is zero, non-negativity constraint, and upper bound can be infinity. And to do that, we have uh, this reserved word, grb.infinity. Here's a couple of notes. We type groby.continuous, it can be used for continuous variables, it means that uh, fractional values can be accepted. We type groby.binary will be used for binary variables, zero, one decisions. And we type equal to integer can be used for integer variables. And LB is the lower bound and UB is the upper bound for a decision variable. Here, the upper bound is infinity, but it can be a number. So the decision variable should be less than 10, 20, or a threshold. The next step is to specify the minimization or maximization problem. Are we minimizing the objective function or maximizing? In order to do that, we call the model dot model sense equal to grb dot minimize. Now we specify that we are dealing with a minimization problem. And don't forget the next line, you call the model dot update. Now, if our problem is maximization, we replace grb minimize with grb maximize. They're all capital letters. The next step is to define sets of constraints. So we call the model and we use the reserved word add constraint. 
Then we'll have the decision variables less than or equal, equal or greater than or equal the parameters. So the reserve word here is add constraint. After defining decision variables and constraint, we need to define objective functions. Step six. Objective is equal to quicksum. Quicksum translates to summation. So in the mathematical formulation, we had summation over some indices. So we use quicksum, then decision variables times coefficients, exactly the coefficients that we have for our decision variable. And we need to define this summation is over what index. So you see a for loop, quicksum for counter in indices. After defining the objective function, we need to assign it to the model. So we call the model dot set objective, then we pass objective variable as an input, and then uh, the model realizes this is the performance measure or objective function. Next step is to solve the model. We call optimize method, and then it's optimized as uh, the problem. At the end, we can print optimal solutions and the objective function values. You can see a selection statement here. If, we, if you remember, we could have different uh, solution types. The model can be infeasible or um, it can be optimal. Now, we want to see the results if the model reaches optimality. So if the model status is equal to groby.optimal, it means that now the results are optimal solutions. Print optimal value. In order to print the objective function value, we call the model dot val as the um, method which returns the objective function value, the optimal one. And then we write a for loop to go through our decision variables and we want to extract the value. So we write a for loop, and in order to uh, extract the value for uh, the optimal value for each decision variable, we call the variable dot small x, and that's how we can extract the value from Groby. Now let's try to implement window glass uh, example in Python. I have already uploaded the code to Canvas, but we are going to implement it together. Okay, first off, um, and as you can see here, we have the mathematical formulation because we always want to look at this to um, save or define the coefficients or the uh, set of constraints. And if you pay attention, when I click on this, it is a markdown. It means that it will be treated like a text. And if I double click, you can see the LaTeX syntax here. So you can use the LaTeX syntax to write any equation that you want. And it is the markdown, so it would be like a text. And if you run it, then you have the equation. So you don't go back and forth um, between the notebook and um, the slide. Okay. The very first step is to um, Summarize the input parameters that we have, coefficients and parameter. So I'm going to add a comment, coefficients and parameters. Technically, the table that we have for a LP model. Okay. We are going to use list and dictionaries. If you remember, we had two product. So I use a variable named product. It's a list. So we have a square bracket. Then the first item is door. The other one is window. So the columns. We also had rows, which represent resources. So I define a variable named resource, another list, and we had three plants. So plant one, plant two, and plant three. We also have profit for each product. So I define profit as a dictionary. It's a curly braces. 
So the key is the product door and then the value is the profit, 3000. The other key is window and the value is 5000. Another piece of information that we can extract from the table is the threshold or capacity, capacity for resources. So I define another variable, which is a dictionary to a store capacity for our plants. So plant one is the first key and the value is four. We have only four hours at plant one. Plant two and the value is 12 hours. You can see it's the right hand side of constraint here. And plan three, 18 hours. Let's make sure that we don't have a typo here. Let me run it. Okay. The other thing is the level of activities. So I define a variable activity, which is a dictionary, but the key is a pair of plant and product type. So the first key is plant one. And door. And the value is one. So technically the coefficients that you see in the constraints. And the first constraint, plant one and door one, which is x sub one is equal to one. So the coefficient is one. We need one hour. Now plant one and window the coefficient is zero. So in the first constraint you don't see x sub two because its coefficient is zero. Now we do the same for the second row or the second constraint, now plant two, because each row represent the resource here, the plants, plant two and door. Do we see a coefficient for X one? No, so the coefficient is zero. Don't forget to add commas here. Then plant two and window, the coefficient is two. Now for the third constraint, we have plant three and door, the first product is three. And then the last one, plant three and window is two. And that's it. So that's all the input parameters that we have from the model or the table of data. Now let's print activity to see the dictionary. So you can see that it's a dictionary between each pair of product and plants. Now, the next step is to define decision variables. So we had the input parameters, now define decision variables. And to do that, first we need to import GrowBPy. So from GrowBPy, import everything we run it okay then I define a variable or an object for our model using the keyword model and I can add explanation here that this is the glass underlying company example Then we define the decision variable. Decision variables are dictionaries. Always in our class. Now I can write a for loop 
to generate decision variables. Here we have two decision variables, one for door, one for window. Let me make sure. So I can write a for loop for L in product. Now we create the decision variable XL. That's how we define the decision variable. So the decision variable for door, decision variable for window. That's what L is referring to. I call our model, then add variable term. We need to specify the read time. This example, it is integer because it's the number of batches. Lower bound is zero and upper bound can be infinity. Technically. When we define the decision variable, then we need to specify, are we dealing with maximization or minimization? To do that, we call our model. We use model sense. which is a reserved word. Then we specify this is Groby maximization, maximizing the profit. Don't forget the last one. Then we need to update the model, model.update. So let me run this. Okay. There is a typo. This is upper bound UB. Let me run it again. X is capital letter. So it's the maximize, not the maximization. Okay, let me fix it. Okay, here we go. So we define the decision variable with a for loop and we specify that this is a maximization problem and then we updated the model. The next step is to define constraint and objective functions. Now, I can, to generate the constraint, I can write a for loop. As you can see in this, which goes through all rows, which are the resources, and then creates the constraint associated with each row. So for L in resource, we call the model dot add constraint. In each constraint, you can see the summation. So if the coefficient is zero, that's why we don't see any summation. But it's technically the summation of activities, as you can see here, times the decision variable for different product. So for the first row, we have the activity times the decision variable. Now, if the coefficient for that activity is zero, then we can drop the decision variable. So the first constraint was one times x1 plus zero times x2, less than four, and that's what we have. So we can apply the quick sum or summation over product. The coefficients are the dictionary activity LP. So this dictionary has uh, two items for the key. So that's why when we want to get access to a specific item, we need to pass the keys. One is um, the resource plant and the other one is the product. So activity LP times 
decision variable is defined over product When we use the quick sum, we need to specify summation over what index. And in this example is summation over product. So for P in product, less than or equal to the limit capacity for each resource. So L refers to resource, the items defined in the resource and P refers to items defined in product. So with this one for loop, we can generate three, const uh, three constraints because we have three items and the resource. So let me run it. If we don't use this for loop, then you need to do it manually one by one. But we want to use the techniques we learned in Python to make life easier. Now we define the objective function. The objective function, you can say it's additive, so it's the summation. So you will use another quick sum, which translates to summation. We have profit for each product. Times the decision variable for each product for L in product. Then we call our model, we use set objective method. We pass the objective as an input, let me run it. Now we have all components. So we have assigned objective, decision variables, and sets of constraints. Now we can optimize the model. So we call the model dot optimize. Now you can see the result, the solution count, optimal solution found, best objective function. Now we want to print the result. First, we check whether or not the model status is optimal. Because if it's not optimal, we might uh, revisit the formulation. So if model dot status is equal to grow be optimal, Then we want to print optimal value for our objective function. To do that, first we call the model dot val, which returns the objective function value. Then we want to print the optimal values for each product. So the quantity for each decision variable. So I write a for loop for P in product. And product is a list, so it goes through all items in that list. Print the item and its value using dot x. So let me run it. Now we can see the result. The optimal value is $36,000 and the quantity. So we produce two batches of door and six batches of windows. That's the optimal solution.